Hey guys, today I'm gonna show you how I make burgers. Like if you came over to my house, this is how I would make you, bur make you a burger. And what you'll find is it's almost no more work. It's almost no more money. In fact, it might save you money and people are gonna love it. So it's win-win and win. They're, yeah, less work, less money, people, win-win-win. Hey guys, as you can see, I am on location. <laughs> I'm still at my parents' house. My dad, if you saw my last video, you know my dad's really sick. I, I wanna first off thank you guys for all your support. You guys have been amazing. I really, it was really encouraging for me. It still is to see those comments roll in. I'll give you an update on him at the end of this video. But um, one of the things that dad said when the other day when he first came, became conscious again, was, uh, hey, are you still making YouTube videos? And I thought, I should do that, you know? So I'm gonna use dad's grill, dad's griddle, and I'm gonna do a video that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And I think you're gonna enjoy this. Like I said, this is a really easy way. It's a really easy way to up your game. You'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it. I would encourage you to follow each of these steps um, at least once and see what you think. Um, and then you can kind of piecemeal them together and do what you think works for you. But if used together, it makes a great, very juicy, very tasty burger that takes almost no more, no more time or money than it would have, you know, had you done it your old way. So the good news is, is most of this work, most of what we need to do is done at the grocery store. So let's go check it out. Road trip. It's not that far. <laughs> Got it all. You're gonna love this. All right, guys, I'm gonna do a quick breakdown on this. Unfortunately, I have to get back up to the hospital, so I hope I can uh, cover everything here. But the most important thing you can do is get the right hamburger meat. You wanna get at least 80-20, write that down. I know a lot of people try to do low fat, and I respect that. I just think when it comes to flavor on a burger, 80-20, you need a minimum of 20% burger fat or else the burger is gonna have a tendency to dry out. If you have to in a pinch, you can do 85-15, um, but I, I mean, honestly, 80-20 at least is what you want. The other thing that you need to do, and it's along the same lines, is you need to butter your buns and then toast them. It makes a dramatic difference in the final outcome. If you try nothing else that I say, try those two things. I promise you it's worth the trouble. People will love it. The third thing that I do, I use real, I use real cheddar cheese. I, uh, this is my preference. You can use American cheese. I was talking to Greg Mervich at Ballistic Barbecue about this. You can use American cheese, but don't do the processed cheese food that comes in the cellophane wrappers. That's not good cheese. And this adds so much flavor when you use actual real cheese. And then from a seasoning standpoint, this is probably one of the m most ubiquitous seasonings I've seen around here. It's not expensive. I think this was a couple of bucks for this gigantic bottle. This is Cavender's all-purpose Greek seasoning. This will make a huge difference in your flavor. And it's just, it's not, it's not like a dramatic, it's more of just a, a little something extra that will make a big difference in the outcome uh, as far as separating it from a normal boring backyard burger. So I, that's about as much as I use. Um, we're about to cook these on a flat top, which is my next recommendation. And what you'll find is you don't need as much seasonings when you use some sort of flat top to grill your burgers because the seasonings don't have the opportunity to drip off into the fire. This is a, a sizzle cue. Uh, my dad's had this for a while, but you could use any griddle you've got handy or, or a skillet or pan or whatever. Um, I'm gonna put these on here and let them start cooking.
It doesn't look like much, but it's awesome. Okay, so I'm shooting this on my iPhone and my little G7X Mark II. And in the middle of that, my iPhone overheated. I guess it got too close to the grill or something. Um, so I don't know what footage I have. Hopefully I have enough to finish this video. Um, but I've got the burgers cooked. I'm not sure where we shut down on this, but I got the burgers cooked. I promise you, this is going to be, I've, I've done this, I've done this a lot. Um, this is a fantastic burger. Let me go ahead and take a bite. That is a fantastic burger and it's so easy to do. It's not really, it's probably not that much different than what you did and what you're already doing. Just make sure to get that 80-20 hamburger meat. Make sure you get that Cavender seasoning, use real cheese, butter your buns, and then use some sort of flat top. That's actually my first time to use that sizzle cube. Um, I really like it. Like I'm, I mean, for a gas grill, the shape is a good size. It allows a lot of airflow. You don't have to use that. If you have a pan, like I said, if you have a pan or a, skill, a skillet or griddle or something that you like to use, that's that's fine. I mean, that, that'll work great. Um, this is just an option that was in front of me because it's the one my dad uses. Um, but it saved my dad money because this grill, actually, this is a funny story. This grill is older and needed a lot of parts replaced, including the flavorizer bars and the, um, or that's not what Kenmore calls them, but the flame, tam flame tamer things in the in the grilling grates. And instead of buying, you know, $150 worth of parts for an old grill, he bought a $40 griddle. I think it's 50 now. I don't know, I haven't seen it in a while. I saw, last time I saw it was at Sam's, it was $39. So you may check there. Um, if I can find a link, I'll put it in the description box below. But uh, he's been using this for five years after he would have thrown out the grill. So but anything will work. You don't have to buy anything if you got it. Um, just the flat top really, really helps. So yeah. So I'll give you guys a little update here in a second um, on my dad's situation if you're interested. I know that's not something everybody's interested in, but just stick around. I'll give you a little update here in a second. I already filmed it. Um, for the rest of you, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys subscribe. I hope you found this useful and love you guys. See you in the next one. So dad is doing okay. Um, first three weeks I was here, um, it was not, I would have not said that like he um it was basically to be blunt just a continuous kick to the balls like everything everything that could have gone wrong seemed to go wrong um he had come out of a he had a hernia in his omentum which is the basically the lining of your um of your abdominal cavity uh it's kind of like the silver skin for lack of a better word it's that's every time someone described it I, that's what i would think about baby back maniac right um they fixed that hernia he still wasn't feeling better, so they did gallbladder. They, they found out his gallbladder had shut off. So they took that out, and in the course of doing that biopsy on that, they determined he had stage four lymphoma, which is a blood cancer. Um, and so he's recovering from all the surgeries. He's got this advanced, very advanced form of, of, of cancer, and he, he, he needed immediate chemotherapy. Like, it was, they, can, they could not wait. So they, they gave him that, and that's kind of where the last video that's where we left it. Um, after that, like basically everything went to crap. Like his kidneys shut down. It, it's a good news, bad news thing. Like the good thing about his this particular form of cancer is even though it's not a, it's like it's not it's a very aggressive one. It actually responds really well to chemo. So the emergency chemo that he got worked from the standpoint of killing a lot of the cancer. But then that flooded his bloodstream with um, basically cancer bodies. Like and and so. Um, like potassium, uric acid, things that the kidneys filter out to keep them in like regular, like appropriate levels so they don't make you sick. Uh, the, and his kidneys couldn't keep up with it. So it's a kind of a, that is more deadly than cancer in the short term, ironically. Um, and it, he ended up in the ICU and his, his kidneys ended up shutting down for um, several days and he ended up having to have uh, you know, these uh, emergency uh, uh, dialysis, um, and we didn't know if his kidney function was going to return. They thought it would, um, but they couldn't guarantee anything, and, you know, they, they kept saying, you know, he may have to do dialysis for the rest of his life, and fortunately, you know, I mean, you can, we made our peace with that. You can live on dialysis. You cannot live with cancer, so if you have to kill your kidneys to kill the cancer, it's a good trade, but fortunately, um, after a couple of very stressful weeks um his kidneys kicked back in and we're able to filter out 
you know, some of these elements that didn't need to be in his bloodstream and they were making him really, really sick. But in the process of those weeks, like every, and it's like every day we had a new setback or challenge or problem and, you know, he was almost unresponsive with everyone. Um, he was just kind of ready to, you know, he was ready to go at one point there. Um, and uh, that was hard. So about two weeks ago, he, he started turning a corner and kind of coming back in the positive direction. Um, a lot of that had to do with his kidney function returning. Some of that had to do with his, you know, his, he, he has a chest tube in um, and, and that straining fluid off his lungs, which sounds like a bad thing, but it's actually a great thing because once you can breathe, a lot of the things about life gets a lot more um, bearable. So he, uh, now he's lucid and he's, he's getting his, he's, you know, he's, he's definitely ready to beat this. He's, he's more positive, more enthusiastic. He's still on his back, but he's doing his PT. Um, and we think hopefully he'll be up walking soon, which would be great. You know, right now he's gone from laying on his back to sitting up more. Um, he's, they're working on getting him off oxygen. Um, they, you know, some, the catheter, his catheter came out today. You know, it is crazy. You get sick like this and you take for, you realize how much you take for granted, like the basics, like the things that we all do every day and just take for granted. Just being able to swallow pills, being able to breathe unassisted, being able to go to the bathroom unassisted, being able to walk, being able to sit up, being able to cough, like without it hurting. Those things are just like, you know, we take those things for granted, but they're really, really important. And they're a really big deal when you can't do them. So um, all that to say, like, he's got a long road ahead but he's got a great attitude about it. And he's right at this moment, you know, he's getting his first real round of chemo. The first one was just the emergency stuff. Um, and he's wrapping up the end of that. It's a four day process and he's getting the, the rest of that today um, as of this recording. And, um, and you know, he's, he's, he's good. He's like, he's, he's tolerating it well um, for now. Um, hopefully he continues to. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's got a long road ahead of him, and and I I would ask you guys to continue to pray, but it's not it's not all doom and gloom at this point. So, thank you so much for your support. This has been the, I just really ap appreciate you guys. I appreciate my YouTube buddies that have reached out and helped support me um, through this. Um, I appreciate you guys who have left some great comments, some very encouraging comments. I thought I thought I was getting those doing that video for him and I realize now it was an encouragement for me because um, a lot of people have been through this and, and to just to know you're not alone is was really really helpful um, this has changed my perspective on chronic illness I, I was very naive to this and I think most people are until they go through it and, you know but just the what all is involved and how difficult it is and the toll it can take on your family is is um, and also the the, the, the the oddly like what it how it helps like your family can grow closer through this and there are good times amongst, amongst the hard times and you know when you're all pulling together and, and banding together to make something ha have to happen you know like we we just we just do it you know our family responded really really well we made it happen you know um, and we're still making it happen we'll continue to make it happen um, knowing that you got that kind of support and your you know and your family and in your friends and your network and like people that you know you guys, you know, it's it's really, you know, it's it's encouraging. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing I've learned is I've wasted a lot of time worrying about crap that doesn't matter. You know, and 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 I guess the bigger realization is just focusing on stupid stuff robs you of time to focus on the things that are not stupid. You know, like friends, family, to some extent, your job. You know. Um, those are the things that, that, that matter. And I just waste a lot of time like in, on stuff that doesn't. And um, just that perspective, I think, is going to be really helpful for me going forward. Um, I wouldn't wish this on anyone to understand. I wouldn't want anyone to have to go through something like this to understand that. But understanding that is one of the benefits that, you know, you don't really expect, I guess, if that makes sense. But yeah. So that's the report on my dad. Again, thanks for your prayers. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll keep you posted. I'll probably post more of this stuff on um, YouTube because I don't want to bog down this channel with 
my dad's health stuff. I don't think he would want that either. Um, he's a very positive person. He gets mad at me whenever I make a video and it's not funny or happy or funny. Or if it's not funny or interesting, he, that's the, he's the first one to say, <clears throat> uh, that's, you're getting a little bogged down there, don't you think? You gotta keep it fun, keep it light, keep it happy. So cancer is definitely not fun, light, and happy. So yeah, with that in mind, I'm probably going to do more of my updates on my Facebook page, just so I can keep you guys who are interested, you know, informed. Um, and uh, I'll probably, you know what I'll do? I'll, let's do this. I'll put a pinned comment below and I'll update that pinned comment on what's going on. If you guys are interested, you can read that there um, and, I'll, and I'll keep you posted that way. Thank you guys so much for your support. I really do love you guys. You guys mean the world to me. You, it, it, I don't know, it just goes back to that being grateful for what you got instead of worrying about what you don't, you know? But yeah, I guess I gotta go. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.